quality of testing at an outset let me congratulate and appreciate the alpha tech cement for organizing this event uh, i am very thankful to mr ashwin moghe mr yttv prasad mr hemant jain and entire team of alpha tech uh, including harshal dinesh and everybody and uh, i am very thankful to you all for being present here this morning for this session and uh, on this particular background of the covid 19 when the entire country is facing serious problems and our civil engineering industry is also closed down i appreciate the efforts of alpha tech to keep busy all the professionals with uh, such a value additions uh, through this uh, lecture such kind of series of lectures and events so that shows their concern for the quality itself uh, as we know that uh, during corona also the continuous testing is going on and uh, number of cases number of patients who are tested that revealed the next line of action so the significance of the testing is very important let it be the field of medical or let it be the field of engineering and uh, with this uh, significance of the testing let us today try to explore some of the things uh, related with the quality of the testing next the testing improves the quality of the construction as we know testing plays very significant role in improving the quality of the construction those who are concerned with the quality of the construction they are all we for the testing and testing is for quality but hardly we talk about the quality of the testing because the quality of the testing will govern ultimately the quality of the construction if quality of testing itself is poor then quality of the construction may not be enhanced to the desired expectation and hence the quality of testing is one of the topics which we need to discuss a lot because it is a soul of ultimately quality of the construction next the testing of the materials testing of the machinery and methods that is ultimately responsible for quality of the work because any civil engineering project it is raised it is erected it is constructed it is developed with the help of persons with the help of materials with the help of machinery with the help of methods so ultimately if the materials machinery methods including even manpower if their quality is maintained then the quality of the testing uh, can be also maintained so my this e talk aims at to discuss some of the issues of quality testing why i am saying some of the issues because the topic is so big the canvas is so vast that even each parameter of the quality may be a topic of one separate lecture so in one lecture it is very difficult to discuss in detail all the issues related with the quality of testing so in brief i will try to uh, <clears throat> explore as many as the quality issues related with the testing but i am aware that all quality issues may not be addressed in one single lecture and with this uh, limitation and uh, considering the time constraint and uh, other parameters let us try to explore in brief at least as many as aspects which uh, we can address next as we know that uh, testing is done for number of different things testing plays very significant role in maintaining the quality as we are coming across with uh, preliminary site investigations and characterization of uh, material before we start any project we need to go for the testing uh, if we go for a very big construction project and the quality of the concrete is to be maintained and the 
high grade concrete, high performance concrete, these are to be used, then we need to go for the proper mix design. The proper mix design and mix proportions, they are required to be investigated through the testing only. Because all the preliminary properties of the constituents of the concrete, they are first tested. Their properties are evaluated. And those properties which are evaluated in the testing, during the testing, are then subsequently used as the base for the mix design, for the mix proportion. Even for that sake, suppose we want to go for the design of foundation. In that entire design, we need to have the exact value of safe bearing capacity. The accurate value of safe bearing capacity will lead not only to the optimum design of the foundation, but it will lead to the economy also. So the SBC can be just investigated through the preliminary site investigation. If we go for the testing of this site investigation, geotechnical investigation, then only we'll be arriving at the exact accurate amount of um, the value of the SBC and it will facilitate us to go for the economy, to go for quality construction of the foundation. For that sake, even that is applicable that way to each and every material of the civil engineering construction, including steel also. The different steels are available. We, we have witnessed in this country, the uh, steel ranging from M2250 to now 500D. And for all those steels, the properties, if we evaluate uh, through the testing initially, that helps the, to go for the proper design. Next, the proper design is one parameter. Uh, characterization of the material is one parameter. But to understand the trend and behavior of the material, is also very important during the quality of the construction. Each material has its own characteristics. And according to those characteristics, the material performs. Its short-term performance or its long-term performance depends on its characteristics, depends on its properties. So to watch the overall performance and to understand the trend and behavior of the material, we need to go for initial testing. Let it be the durability study for the construction project, or let it be the life of construction chemicals or paints or any material for that sake. We need to know the overall performance of that material. We need to know the, uh, uh, the behavior of that material. And it is the only, <laughs> testing is the only uh, thing which allows us to watch this kind of overall performance. Next. The testing also facilitates us to verify the design parameters or assumptions. As we know, many of the consultants are now uh, present here in the audience. They, they are designing the entire building. The entire <coughs> design is governed by means of some assumptions. Those assumptions are based on material properties. Let it be the specific gravity, let it be the compressive strength, let it be the steel properties or the loadings which we are going to consider. Or for sake of uh, design, we need so many input parameters. We need so many variables. All those input parameters, all those variables, they are assumed not randomly, but they are assumed on the basis of well-defined test results. So testing facilitates us to arrive at those design parameters with their exact values. The assumptions are not random, they are based on those testing results. And this is a great significance of testing that it reveals all those values which are ultimately very helpful during the design of uh, any structure. Next, the <coughs> Theoretical considerations which we do during the preliminary design are required to be modified time to time. And accordingly, uh, the design goes on developing its different modes. 
the optimization which we need to achieve in any engineering project goes through the process of continuous modification. And this continuous modification is based on the theoretical considerations. Initially, we assume certain values after the study, after the investigation, after the characterization of the material, after the trial mix results, we modify that entire that parameter and ultimately we incorporate those modifications so that our theoretical considerations tends to the accurate values which ultimately leads towards the optimization of the designs optimizations of material consumption ultimately leading to economy next all such uh, things are facilitated by the testing so testing plays a very important next uh, testing plays a very important role not only in initial stage but in latter stage also when it goes to the local failures local distresses local problems in the structures to diagnose the cause of any such problem uh, the testing is again <laughs> very helpful and helps us facilitates us let it be the crack formation or fatigue behavior or stress concentration in the structure by virtue of uh, many reasons during performance of the structure all such problems are required to be diagnosed and this diagnosis is facilitated by testing next the testing plays again next very important role in investigating the complex phenomena of actions of the different stresses in failure mechanism from research point of view also we know that different modeling techniques are available the software modeling uh, is done for the any structure and to know its exact behavior under the loadings finite element uh, method uh, is uh, one of the methods which uh, helps us um, there are a number of different uh, sections which we use nowadays and variety of uh, the structures uh, plain plates with the holes the castellated steel columns hotched sections the plates and shells with the different shapes the domes and all those uh, things they are related with the complex phenomena of the action of different loading conditions so under such different complex uh, actions of the loads how that uh, <coughs> element will behave is required to know in advance uh, the software modeling is one of the um, types of the testing of the material that helps us here to predict such kind of complex phenomena to predict such kind of behavior and it gives fair amount of the concentration of the stresses and that helps us to go for the appropriate modifications in our design next such modifications uh, is a continuous uh, method which is possible due to testing of the software testing of the model the construction methodology and machinery they also play a very important role in maintaining the quality of the construction so the design philosophy the material characterization the material properties they are at one end but with all those basic inputs when we execute the project at actual in the field the appropriate construction methodology and the machinery that uh, is also uh, very helpful to maintain and enhance the quality materials alone cannot do uh, cannot enhance the proper uh, quality of the work along with the materials the appropriate construction methodology and duly supported with the appropriate machinery this team whole of the team then ultimately leads towards the quality of the construction this kind of thing uh, again uh, on the front of uh, construction methodology and uh, on the front of machinery that is further facilitated by means of testing the redesign the modifications or uh, let it be a lightweight construction precast construction 
prefabricated construction all these different methodologies and uh, different machineries for adopting these methodologies they are tested well in advance unless otherwise you test in laboratory the precast element you cannot erect it on the field uh, if the uh, some certain span of the flyover that segment if it is not properly tested at the precast mode in the laboratory we cannot venture to put it on the site there so testing is helpful for the for appropriate checking of the construction methodology also along with its machinery next it further facilitates the early warning of impending failures in case of uh, distressed structures if uh, we conduct the testing then we will get the idea about the near future behavior of the structure how the structure is going to behave in a near future whether those cracks will be leading to early failure of the structures and from that point of view uh, one of the methods uh, of the structural health monitoring or uh, uh, it which is achieved uh, through the ndt uh, early warning is possible so such kind of structural health monitoring or uh, non destructive testing ultimately gives us the idea it is this kind of testing is something like an alarm bell for all of us to predict the behavior of the structure in near future which is uh, overloaded or which is already facing some problems or which is uh, going through the structural uh, faults or uh, extra loading stress concentrations such a sort of problem all such things are tackled at least uh, we get the earlier idea of uh, their near future behavior to the testing so testing has to play a very important role from that next from that point of view also uh, further to add that when we are going for uh, some complications after the accident takes place after some failure takes place then uh, the forensic investigations are to be conducted for legal defense and for all such cases uh, the only and only um, thing which helps us is the testing nowadays the forensic civil engineering is coming up in a big way this is a new branch which is uh, developed in uh, many developed countries in india also we cannot keep ourselves far away from the forensic uh, applications in engineering forensic uh, applications in pharmacy in uh, other fields are well established but in engineering also we are now going for the forensic investigations and the testing has to play very important and significant role for rational formulation of uh, the authentic base for such kind of legal battle afterwards next along with uh, this kind of forensic uh, investigations the evaluation and arbitration next is also equally uh, <coughs> important we come across many cases during our entire span of uh, professional life which are related with the valuation and arbitration for such uh, cases the testing can form a very rational base and based on that we then can argue we can go for accurate valuation or even uh, for arbitration we can find the case uh, with a strong engineering background if testing is with us so testing is that way a bodyguard of uh, arbitration and forensic investigations we uh, have a good uh, trend to use the softwares in field now the extent of the projects the quantum of the project the total scope of the project has compelled us to shift from manual calculations to software modeling and hardly any big project without software modeling is possible to execute nowadays and for such kind of softwares we need to go for um, <coughs> validation of the design when we are using the softwares 
once i asked uh, my students to develop the software to design the canal and all students they were so excited and the ugly enthusiastic uh, students they came to me i uh, were dancing literally dancing so yes we achieved it we have done it and they showed me the results of uh, that canal design and then i asked uh, yeah put this data uh, this discharge and all uh, these input parameters and now let me know what is your, your dimensions of the section using your software modeling and then i was astonished to note that the depth of the canal uh, the output was 4 kilometers so uh, software can give any result it is such a strange device for any input it has to give some output so it is not important that what input we are giving to software and what output software is giving to us unless otherwise the validation is achieved the software modeling has no meaning and for sake that sake of uh, validation it is very important to go for proper testing of the <coughs> structure uh, testing of the design and this is possible only when we follow the path of uh, testing next under these circumstances uh, it is very important to know that when to do the testing because uh, uh, testing can be done uh, before the construction during the construction and after the construction uh, all the three stages they play very important role each stage has its own advantages and limitations but as we know that post construction testing has limitations uh, so as far we have to maintain the quality as compared to pre construction and during construction testing so the testing which we conduct before construction and during the construction at least there is some scope for going going for the rectification going for the modification post construction technique at the most can help us to go for selection of appropriate rehabilitation retrofitting treatment only but hardly we can modify the design or re execute the design that scope is very limited for the post construction technique and therefore the pre construction testing preliminary testing and testing during the construction they have to play a big role for the projects which are yet to come the projects which have already constructed executed which are in practice which have uh, utilized which have been utilized for a long duration of uh, their service span and now their further uh, maintenance kind of treatment is uh, required for that sake post construction techniques uh, a uh, post construction testing plays a very significant role so from that point of view uh, the three types all these three pre construction during construction and post construction technique testing they all play very next a significant role in um, performance of the structure ultimately testing is done by the persons we have some technicians we have some engineers who are responsible and accountable for the testing at the site at, at the, in the laboratory they are doing this testing with some equipments so they are using some equipments there are very advanced equipments available nowadays in the market all those equipments are <coughs> um, in market with uh, very highly sophisticated techniques and the testing is done on the materials with the help of these equipments we have number of materials associated with any construction project right from starting from the water to aggregates to cement to paint as a last activity of the project number of hundreds of materials are associated with our projects so with appropriate equipment the persons are conducting the tests on the materials while doing this thing there are well defined procedures there are codes there are handbooks we adopt the procedures by following those codes by following those uh, handbooks and then we conduct the testing so ultimately if we want to 
arrive at a quality of testing, a qualitative testing, these four important parameters are there. These are the four important uh, elements, the persons, the equipments, the materials, and the procedures. They are governing the quality of the testing. And therefore, this, uh, in this lecture, in this e-talk, I intend to explore some of these issues which are related with the persons, their competency, with the equipments, their quality, with the materials, their properties, their characterization, and the procedures which we are going to adopt during the testing. Because if we are weak on these uh, four elements, persons, equipments, materials, and procedures, ultimately the quality of the testing will be also deteriorating. And therefore, if you want to maintain the quality of the testing, we will have to focus on quality of the persons, quality of the equipments, quality of the materials, and ultimately quality of the procedures. All these four all together, they will ultimately be responsible and accountable to govern the quality of the testing. And therefore, it is very necessary that when we are talking about the quality of the testing, we will have to address the issues related with these four elements uh, in the testing, during the testing. Next. All those uh, <coughs> things starts with the personal component first. Who are responsible, who are conducting the testing? It is the technician. It is the engineer who is accountable for that. So we'll, we'll have to see what, are, what is the qualification of that person who is conducting the testing. What is his education? What is his work experience? And whether he has gone through on-job training during his entire career? Because this is very important. I happen to visit so many sites during the testing procedures, during the inspections. And then I frequently go on talking, asking, uh, number of questions. Uh, eventually, incidentally, I asked one of the persons who, who was very senior in one of the uh, sites. I asked uh, who, who has tested these cubes. He said, sir, I have tested the cubes. Considering his age, looking to his experience and all those things, I think uh, he is a big expert <laughs> in this field. And uh, then uh, just incidentally, I asked uh, what, what is your qualification from where, uh, from which college you have, did, uh, you have done your engineering? Uh, he said, sir, sorry, I am not engineer. I have done my BA. I was shocked. You have done your BA, your Bachelor of Arts. How come you are going for uh, doing this testing? So the complete qualification of the person who is uh, doing the testing import is very important. I, I, I just uh, for sake of, uh, I thought that with a wide, uh, with a big experience, he might have learned the things during the entire career. I just asked a uh, number of technical terms to him. He was unable to tell. He was not knowing humidity. He was not knowing compressive strength. He was not knowing uh, calibration. He was not knowing water cement ratio. So there are so many technical things which are associated with the testing which this person need, needs to understand. And qualification and education is one of the important uh, aspects uh, which are responsible uh, for the quality of the testing. So when we are appointing the engineer and technician on the field, we should see that whether that person is <clears throat> qualified enough, whether he is uh, having technical experience uh, based on his knowledge and qualification not uh, based on his uh, non-technical degree. And this is not sufficient. The time demands continuous training because day by day methodologies are changing. Once upon a time in this country, the working stress method was there, then came ultimate theory, then came limit state uh, design. So procedures are changing, design philosophies are changing. The machineries are changing. Once upon a time, we used to uh, we used the simple ordinary 20 second theodolite. Then we shifted to one second theodolite. Then we nowadays we are using total stations. So machinery are also updated, procedures are updated, philosophies are updated. 
daily every year something new philosophy new technology is coming and therefore just by securing the qualification once upon a time uh, that is not sufficient there is a need of continuous job training also so our engineers our technicians they should go undergo to such kind of job training continuously this is very next this is very important and the certification and continuous professional develop, development programs will add a value uh, in their job training aspect uh, continuously uh, they should go through the seminars the workshops the faculty development programs fdps then uh, continuous professional cpds they should attend the expert sessions they should go and participate at actual in on field training by doing the testing at actual so such kind of continuous professional development programs which ultimately resulting into certification programs that is the need of the time now those who are professionals here those who are associated with testing there is a high time to ask this question to our mind that yes i am doing testing how many certifications of the testing i have as on date how many certifications i have acquired during last one year how many continuous professional development programs i have attended in last 3 months in last 6 months in last one year or for that sake in last 3 years i am sure that we have a good scope for development on this aspect next the competency of testing agencies is also the another issue there are many uh, agencies who perform the testing uh, we outsource the testing job to these agencies they take the job on turnkey basis but for those testing agencies uh, i have full respect for them they are doing a great service to the industry to the nation but at the same time if we want to maintain the quality of the testing we need to just uh, take a look at their competency also what infrastructure they have one of the testing laboratories which i visited i was shocked it was one simple flat of one bhk and uh, that was a testing um, room the testing laboratory i asked uh, do you have this is your it seems this is your office where is your testing laboratory they said no no we conduct it here only so no facilities were there room was not uh, air condition humidity and other controls were not there and in in one apartment in one uh, flat of one bhk uh, with this uh, very limited infrastructure that uh, testing agency was operating uh, the, with the testing programs of big big projects so we need to understand what is the infrastructure i just quickly asked that fellow that are you satisfied with this kind of small infrastructure for such big huge testing Uh, the job which you are doing he said uh, by laughing and taking it lightly he said uh, no no so what has happened just now i have retired from job and now my son is also will be completing the graduation and i i am thinking now to open this venture so just after my retirement there should be something i should be engaged actively with some activity and that's why i have started with this activity so manual testing agency and testing activity is not a pass activity for sake of uh, some relaxation after your retirement or neither in this uh, some of the such uh, avenues to be open for newly fresh graduates of course that uh, this is one of the very good career paths for new graduates but they need to go for certain <coughs> norms certain minimum basic requirements machinery are very limited uh, nowadays uh, testing agency means i have one testing hammer 
I have at the most one ultrasonic uh, testing machine, and that's all. I am consultant. I am a competing agency. <laughs> I am a, a competent agency, testing agency in the field. So whether we need uh, appropriate machinery, that also we need to. Do. There are some uh, testing agencies which are really doing good. They are uh, really uh, good. Uh, they have good infrastructure. They have good machinery. They have employed the qualified staff also. But for some of them, they have not yet accredited. Uh, they, are, they didn't get the certification from ISO. We know ISO 17025 gives certification for testing agencies. So we should have the accreditation uh, from the different, uh, we, we need to get accredited as per the norms of ISO um, for the uh, good testing agencies. Uh, NPL is one of such uh, uh, agencies. There are so many such agencies. Uh, NPL is one of them uh, to, uh, which we know, many of us we know. Then uh, all such testing agencies, they necessarily should have qualified staff. But at the same time, they need to have sufficient literature. There are so many courses uh, ranging from ASTM to an ACI course to yeah, ICE course. Many of the agencies, they do not have sufficient literature, sufficient course, handbooks, books, supporting research papers, uh, validation, uh, for sake of validation, the thing, calibration things. So when we are giving the job, outsourcing the job of testing to, to some testing agency, we need to know, we, we should confirm that they have the adequate infrastructure, machinery, they are uh, accredited by uh, the accredited agency, and whether they have sufficient literature or not. If we critically look into all these aspects before outsourcing the work of testing to some agency, we cannot maintain the testing. We cannot maintain the testing of uh, the quality of the testing. Next. So this is a very important aspect. Next. Um, <laughs> the continuous professional development that is required to be achieved uh, if the staff is employed by this testing agency. The competency is very important. All those faculty members, all those uh, uh, technical manpower which is employed there, that uh, the people they should uh, be competent enough uh, in requiring uh, for the required test methods. They, they need to have the uh, understanding and technical competency uh, to perform the testing. And for that, next for that sake, we should appreciate the practices which are available to at the developed countries. Because in many developed countries, uh, they have maintained the minimum standard for such kind of testing. They are employing full-time registered professional engineer with at least five years experience uh, for all the testings. Unfortunately, in India, we are focusing only on qualification. We see whether the person who is responsible for technical testing, a couple of systems here and there, and that made us to get tuned once again. So uh, the testing plays a very important role to get tuned with each other again. Let it be with the quality or let it be with you all again here. So this is very important uh, to know. Uh, uh, let's continue. A break about will continue once again. So uh, the criteria which uh, uh, the developed countries they are following is uh, for technicians. They conduct the program, technician program, for uh, the <clears throat> quality, and uh, they can they conduct the written examination. If uh, the technician who wishes to work there in the laboratory, if this they pass the written examination, then only they can go for the next examination. Next, please. The 
after passing the written examination they need to go next they need to go for performance examination so written examination theoretical knowledge is not sufficient for uh, all those who clear the written examination they need to go for the performance examination also and after passing the performance uh, this performance examination uh, which uh, has two components to appear for they need to give the demonstration of the test and they need to uh, produce the proper documentation of that then only they can act as a technician for laboratory for field testing and all next please so th this is the practice they are following their uh, in developed country next slide the uh, examination which they conduct it is a certification program it has well defined syllabus there are different test methods which are mentioned in the syllabus there are codes there are the practice test methods to be performed and having gone through a structured syllabus having gone through a structured test written test and the practical test then only they are certified as technician and they become competent to uh, go for testing let us on this background ask the question to ourselves what system we have in india are our technicians certified are we conducting the tests do you have some syllabus for that are we needed to pass are, are we passing those examinations unfortunately no such systems are practiced in india no special code is available for the quality of testing for testing there are is codes but to maintain the quality of the testing unfortunately no code is available as it is available abroad next please so uh, this is a very important and good thing that they are doing but they they have not limited themselves only to the testing uh, person personalities only personnel both technicians engineers who are performing the test they necessarily need to go through the tests uh, accreditation and certification but which are the testing agencies they are also required to be periodically accredited there there are standards and there are the criteria for quality assurance uh, agencies and if those agencies if they follow those standards if they follow those criteria then only and if they are accredited periodically then only they can act as a testing agency or else they cannot next please so this is very important uh, quality cautiousness that they exhibit there are standards and criteria for evaluating agency testing agency is one thing there are some evaluating agencies also and they also need to go for the uh, accreditation so all such standard practices only will lead towards the quality of the testing we need to learn the lessons in india from all these countries to maintain the quality next please uh, on one front uh, when this is uh, the thing uh, if we take a glance in india at our end uh, we'll come to know that uh, our equipments are many times they do not uh, fulfill the basic requirements for any testing for any quality during the testing the equipment plays very important role we saw we discussed at the start only there are four elements person is first which we have discussed at length equipment is second material is third and the procedure is fourth so we will shift towards the material the equipment sorry the equipment uh, need to be very accurate we know accuracy of the equipment is defined by means of the list count uh, the equipment which you are seeing here is you know uh, measuring the distance so nowadays instead of taking the tape and measuring the dimensions of the structure just with the help of this pointer and the sensor fixed in that we can get the digital display of this uh, thing very nice device very nice uh, use and application of the technology but however we checked 
whether this is calibrated or not whether it is giving accurate measurement or not using it is a good thing but its calibration plays very important role there next please so uh, what is the list count of our uh, list count of our staff uh, survey staff whether it is checked next slide then uh, whether that um, machine is accurate accurate showing the accurate result this is important role. we are using the uh, survey equipment survey plays very important role in entire quality let it be the survey of alignment of the road let it be the survey of uh, the tunnel alignment or in many cases the resolution plays very important role because the survey which is conducted maybe ordinary level maybe with one second third light 20 second third light or maybe with uh, uh, the advanced total station but how many times we check the resolution we demand the certificate of the resolution once we purchase the uh, one second third light or total station are we going for periodic uh, calibration of that machine is very important or else as you are seeing here that the error cumulative error goes on increasing and this error when it goes on increasing the all all of the levels will become wrong so resolution is very important when we are using the equipments for the testing we need to know not only uh, worry about their accuracy along with that resolution plays also very important particularly in the survey equipment next slide the resolution and the sensitivity these are two aspects of any good machine uh, as we know that we use the bubble there in serving equipments how many of us in whole of our testing career in our testing life we have checked the sensitivity of the bubble officially how many of us we have calibration of sensitivity of the bubble if the bubble is disturbed by couple of uh, uh, centimeters or say even for that sake by uh, 5 millimeters even all of the sensitivity of the machine has gone so whatsoever accuracy it has on the staff the survey instrument and its bubble and its resolution and its sensitivity is not maintained what is the use of such equipment so when we are using such machines equipment we need to uh, check their sensitivity next slide we need to uh, go for uh, checking of this along with that each and every equipment it has some range the appropriate selection of the equipment considering its appropriate range which is suitable for that particular testing plays very important role in maintaining the quality of the testing whether that machine is having the appropriate range which is desired which is mentioned in that code that is required to be checked next slide so all those things they are very important to ask after it's uh, particularly uh, the machines which are associated with uh, the entity they are also equally important next please the ultrasonic test Um, machine and the uh, um, NDT hammer. These are uh, common techniques. Now, when we are using such kind of ultrasonic machinery, they need to know their response time because accuracy and functioning and quality of results due to these machines it is governed by means of their response time. How many of us we are really caring for the temperature effect during observations? of ndt uh, next please and, uh, when there is a temperature outside in the field in the range of 30 to 60 next please then we need to apply the correction 5% reduction in velocity is to be considered when the temperature outside is very high it's other way around if the temperature outside is less it is to the tune of 4 degree centigrade then 
7.5% increase in velocity is required to be maintained. Now we are conducting the ultrasonic test even in winter at the temperature of 10 degrees centigrade with the same uh, velocity value. Even if we conduct it in the hot summer to the tip of 42 degrees centigrade, we consider the same velocity. There is no correction factor, neither on uh, reduction side nor on the increment side we apply. Next, please. So this uh, is hampering the quality of the testing. The surface preparation is uh, playing very important role in NDT testing. Next, please. Uh, that is required to be done. Uh, very few people, they use the carborundum stone for clearing the surface. Next, please. So all uh, preparations of the surface and uh, these things, they govern the quality. How you are holding the transducers during the test, their angle with the testing surface, that is equally important. Uh, now we are testing the cube in the laboratory. The dimension of the cube is just 15 centimeter. The velocity which we will be getting over the length of 15 centimeter only. In the field, the column, beam, slab, where we are applying these two transducers, they are at a more distance more than 15 centimeters. So there are some limitations on the sufficient path length in the laboratory, and that hampers the quality, that uh, deviates the quality from the field testing. So laboratory testing on the cube result and the field testing of the same concrete there, that there is a mismatch. That is very important. Orientation of the reinforcement is very important. When we are conducting the NDT in the field, uh, the, uh, we normally conduct it for RCC. And when we are talking about RCC, it is not PCC then. Uh, the plain cement concrete is a different story. But when there is a reinforcement inside the slab, column, beam, then that orientation of the reinforcement, next please, is also required to be considered while interpreting the results. The pulse velocity increases by the magnitude of 1.2 to 1.9 times when there is a reinforcement. Are we counting for that? Are we considering that parameter while interpreting the results. And that's why our field results, due to improper use of the equipments, inaccurate use of the equipments, they are deviating. So quality of the testing is deteriorated due to all these parameters. Next. So how to have the machine in the laboratory is not sufficient. We need to have the proper quality of the machines. The interpretation of the machine is, uh, next please, uh, is equally important. So this is on one side. The software modeling which we mentioned initially, that many uh, uh, software models are now available in the market. And they are based on the principle of uh, repeatability. When the modeling is done with uh, uh, the advanced This artificial neural network needs a huge database. If your data is very large in numbers, maybe probably in thousands or lakhs, then you get the refined results. And that entire data is assessed through the software based on the process of repeatability. So whether the software processing, that computing facility is capable of doing the processing uh, repeatedly with accurate speed, what is the data storage capacity and uh, what is that uh, repeatability that counts a lot. So it is not only that we are using the equipment or we have the equipment. It is not only that we uh, have the um, software at our end. If we are not using it properly and with all these uh, parameters checked, then quality of whatsoever great equipment and softwares we have, we may not get the desired quality of the test. Next, please. Uh, this is very important. Uh, 
the quality of the equipment is by and large governed by calibration so whether our equipments are calibrated or not that we need to uh, check frequently and one more thing some people they are proudly saying that yeah my equipment is calibrated if you ask next question to them from whom you have calibrated it they tell some private agency now that private agency whether it is accredited whether they are following, following the norms of uh, iso all uh, 7025 this is a problem sometimes they they just tell yeah yeah we we have uh, tested it uh, we have calibrated the equipment that too with uh, certification of uh, iso certified company testing agency and if you ask the next question to them that when you have <laughs> the obtained the last calibration certificate they said oh it was uh, some four years before so it is not sufficient then whether you are maintaining the frequency that matters a lot next please so and many people now they have the mobile vans they have the uh, testing mobile testing facilities and they have the machinery mobile uh, lab contains the machinery but some people they think that uh, this is not uh, for mobile laboratory this is only for the structured laboratory no the testing facilities let it be um, in the laboratory or, or mobile laboratory all are required to be calibrated our site experiences tell uh, very funny things next please that uh, the equipments which we are using say ctm on this site it is in horrible conditions many times the oil is not filled properly the calibration is not done in one of the testing uh, laboratories field laboratories when i visited it there was no cube there was no pressure applied machine was not started and still the dial gauge was reading 5 kN observation reading so it means uh, it is faulty machine so machines are faulty their base is not uh, proper on temporary base they are just uh, raising the machines next please uh, particularly in case of this next thousand uh, this um, hand operated machines the rods are not available to operate the things so they put uh, some wooden uh, bully small stick uh, to pull that uh, lever uh, so they, nobody is concerned about the rate of uh, application of the load during testing cube molds is the another story here you are seeing now see there is no proper uh, screws and nuts and bolts ordinary binding wire is used weighing balance is not again um, there weighing balance is not uh, calibrated uh, even uh, i remember that uh, um, even the doctors if they are using the weighing balance uh, in their hospital they are required to calibrate their um, weighing balance in our um, laboratory we use sensitive ba balance we use pan balance we use uh, uh, electronic balance so calibration of all those equipments that plays a very important role in quality next please that uh, time to time periodic checking is uh, required to be done next uh, at, when we are filling the cube the tamping rod which we are using that is another story please next please this tamping rod it has uh, some specifications next tamping rod should have diameter 16 uh, um, mm it should have the length of 600 mm if it is uh, rounded if it is square then its length uh, should be 400 mm then its weight is well defined uh, how many blows are to be given that is well defined next is this is not available uh, we just uh, uh, so must go on at the site <laughs> with that philosophy what we do we uh, pick up any uh, rod there on the site and we use the same rod um, for our um, um, compaction next please so these are the site issues how we will maintain the quality next the needle vibrator which we go for compaction that is the another story next please so we we are um, not bothering about the things that uh, whether we are submerging that um, vibrator fully into the concrete um, for at least 10 seconds it is to be next 
it is, it is to be operated. Uh, its teeth should be fully submerged. As we know that when we are taking it out, uh, it should be taken with uh, certain um, uh, speed. 2.5 centimeter per second should be the pull up uh, of uh, vibrator when we are doing. Uh, next, please. Uh, then, uh, when uh, we are inserting that, uh, putting it into the concrete, there should be overlap of the, uh, with the previous radius every time when we are uh, changing the location. There is a bit of thumb rule that uh, the radius of action should be four times the vibrator tip uh, diameter. We know the uh, vibrator, they are available in the market ranging from uh, 25 millimeter to 60 millimeter diameter. What uh, you are using, which diameter you are using will govern how many four times uh, uh, the diameter, tip diameter, uh, that will be the radius of the uh, influence. And accordingly, when you are shifting to next location, you need to call the appropriate um, uh, overlap. That is required to be followed. So these, these simple things, they uh, contribute a lot in uh, testing. If uh, you take the uh, um, cube, which is from the concrete, which is not well compacted, it will hamper the uh, total uh, strength and quality of the concrete. So vibration is, is very important, playing very important. Next, please. Uh, important role here. Uh, there are so many uh, equipments which we can go on discussing, like uh, one of the very important is helmets. Please, next, please. The, in helmet, uh, you can, we are, nobody is bothering about the weight, mass of the helmet. Uh, according to IS2925, uh, the mass is well defined. Uh, it should not be very uh, heavy so that there will be neck problems, head problems. It should not be that lighter for sake of formality. We are putting on head. Its shock absorption resistance uh, is required to be checked. Its permeability resistance is required to be checked. And um, its penetration uh, things uh, is required to be checked. Uh, all this permanently set on it. Uh, next, please. Um, these uh, things, uh, they play a very important role. Heat resistance, water absorption, electrical resistance. So the things, uh, even for one simple helmet, if we want to use on this side, you need to look into the matter or all these aspects, quality aspects. And uh, uh, then only we will be able to maintain the quality. On site, uh, we have uh, binding wire, another big issue. Next, please. Display all the unit, all the animations. So we, we are not bothering about the tensile strength of the, hardly we go and test the binding wire. Uh, we, we are not bothering about um, the tensile strength. Again, we, we, we are not bothering about whether it is from a hard um, uh, process or it is an annealed one. Uh, physical test of the binding wire are hardly done in the laboratory testing about its size, uh, surface condition, tensile strength, bending strength, warping and coating. Thing. Next, please. All these tests on the binding wire, we, we are not going to, uh, to do. Uh, even for sampling sake, we are not doing the proper sampling of that also. So that is also imp equally important. Next, please. So binding wire is a big issue. Uh, now it was recommended that instead of binding wire, go for the weld uh, when we are going for lamping of the reinforcement. But again, uh, welding quality is another serious issue. Well, hardly we follow the norms of IS822 of the weld when we are using the weld on the field. Uh, welding electrodes, welding wire, welding flux, the gases. Next, please age preparation, well dimensions, they are all are the aspects which govern the quality of the welding. Our, we should ask this question to our mind now when we are talking about the quality of the testing, that uh, are we concerned about all these parameters? Are we, before using the weld on the site, are we uh, doing the test of continuity, fusion test, soundness test, bend test, penetration mm -hmm. test, load test, hardness test, there are so many things. 
and if we do not uh, do all those tests perform all those tests on the welding material now how we can give the assurance that during the earthquake and during the lateral loading our welding welded bars will stay in position so next please these are the, the issues which we need to observe in the field scaffolding is another very important issue most ignored issue you can see here that there are so many parameters of the <clears throat> scaffolding which are ignored on on the field the guard rail the tow board and uh, there are so many aspects which are not uh, technically followed there is a is code is 3696 which indicates all those um, details of uh, this thing uh, next slide please oh, scaffolding that Please next is the bellies which we use the uh, the core bellies single pole scaffolding and for double uh, pole scaffolding all those bellies of class one and class two which we use they they uh, they should be of uh, some ISO course according to ISO specifications and uh, there is a requirement that when we use those bellies next is that at certain distance from the base those bellies. They they are required to be marked with the name of their species uh, of the timber which is used there, and then um, the symbol, the IS certification marks that uh, uh, is required to be displayed on each and every bully from a distance of two meter um, from the base. Next, please. So this uh, this is the requirement there. Next. Uh, which we are in, uh, in, um, ignoring um, our field experience of testing of the sand is again uh, of the same thing when we are talking about the quality of the material testing uh, we are separating the fine aggregate and coarse aggregate by the process of cv but how many times we have checked the sieve size how many times we have calibrated it whatever is available on the field if the manufacturer has provided that it is all right or else uh, uh, whatever is available that is differentiating our coarse aggregates from fine aggregates at the mercy of the uh, um, machine so there is no quality check on this frequently we should uh, check all those things next please so uh, the, the material and machine quality they should go hand in hand queuing of concrete next please display the entire slide uh the curing of concrete is also equally important thing how we are curing that concrete it should not be less than for the ordinary concrete um, when it is exposed to dry and hot weather condition but nowadays in the field we observe that uh, we use we go for blended cements and in case of blended cements the minimum curing period should be 14 days but all compulsions on the site and uh, with the speed which is uh, already pre decided irrespective of the quality and all those things we have uh, finished the entire operation of curing within 7 8 days and we just run after the next uh, stage of the construction so uh, that period is not uh, followed accordingly the temperature of the um, water Uh, that um, in that condition that is not followed when curing is done that um, the temperature uh, is one criteria the water that is required to be checked if it is a cube and if it is uh, just in the submerged condition in a tank then that uh, water in the tank necessarily uh, should be checked uh, every 7 days this is many times is not followed in the field that hamper next please that hampers the quality of the testing and uh, there are so many requirements of the next please requirements of uh, storage uh, testing the specimen first of all the frequency of uh, sampling uh, conditions there is a code how the sample should be taken those are required to be followed after taking the samples they they are required to be kept in moist air at least with 90% relative humidity we should ask this question to ourselves how many of us for sake of a good quality testing we maintain 90% relative humidity how many as of us we maintain the temperature of 27 degrees this is uh, important 
then again the total uh, standard deviation aspects they are ignored in the field concrete mix mix proportioning there are guidelines as mentioned in is10262 these are also ignored so our field experiences unfortunately are not very promising by and large i am talking i am not talking about the people who are following it who are maintaining it uh, i congratulate them you know, all those agencies all those projects where these minor things might be related with the binding wire to bullies to formwork to scaffolding to um, the welding operation we salute but for all other sites we need to take care of uh, all those aspects please next please and um, uh, so as far the procedures are concerned next please uh, so as far the procedure is concerned we should go for uh, the different instruments also uh, the field experience is not good we know that the cement consumption is largely depend upon the size and shape of the aggregate so flakiness index and elongation index will decide what will be our uh, shape and size of the coarse aggregate it will decide what will be the consumption of the cement and hardly we conduct the test of flakiness index and elongation index uh, for the sampling process uh, for sake of sampling whether we are doing the proper sampling that is another issue what is the frequency of uh, doing that testing that is another next please that is another issue and so ultimately uh, that hampers to the quality of the testing the specimens which we are taking uh, <clears throat> at the end of the concreting that again um, how to store them there are some guidelines they should be well packed in damp sand or damp sacks when we are bringing a, uh, all those uh, cubes to the testing laboratory how many of us <coughs> <coughs> we bring the cubes in the laboratory in damp condition uh, in hot summer season in open tempo we bring the cubes to the labs in laboratory also we keep it somewhere <coughs> as guided by the labor there pune there and uh, whether we are maintaining the temperature that is also required to be <coughs> checked next please <coughs> the testing of specimen is another issue in fact this itself is uh, different here whatever we are talking each aspect is uh, really speaking a uh, topic of one independent lecture but i'm just trying to touch uh, all these aspects the orientation of the cube how we keep the cube there in the machine the alignment of loading the leveling of the machine uh, rate of loading is very important aspect that is going to uh, give the different results of the uh, strength of the cube again grade of the concrete and the rate of loading they are required to be decided the calibration of uh, the machine all these aspects they govern the cube strength so the concrete will or otherwise will be deformed whatever grade quality of cement we use but if we do not follow the proper machine if we do not follow the proper procedure then the quality will hamper and ultimately we blame the cement ultimately we blame the quality of material but it is the quality of the testing which will be giving the distracted results and that will create the problem next please so all these things are required to be followed in the field <clears throat> the quality uh, when we are <coughs> checking we should follow uh, the pre construction stage uh, the post construction during construction next please <coughs> all these uh, when we are uh, following we should also bother about the frequency of testing it's not just for sake of formality uh, once a while we have checked it the frequency is important the preciseness of the method that is equally important and uh, along with all these things uh, what matters a lot is interpretation and analysis of the results which are based on the knowledge experience and skill of judgment 
of course skill of judgment and experience are the non technical component but they still play very important role and uh, uh, along with the knowledge uh, technical basic fundamental sound principles this is also equally important so uh, while doing that we need to go for the comparison of the design parameters and long term trends uh, unfortunately uh, if you check the same material in two different laboratories then the same result should be obtained but behavior of the similar structure behavior of the similar material behavior of the similar uh, characteristics tested in two different laboratories will not match and this is very important next uh, when we are talking about the quality we should go for that and that's why uh, when we we are now i am coming in the last phase of my <coughs> presentation that when we are uh, going for the uh, adopting the proper procedures we need to understand the importance of accreditation uh, and follow the norms of uh, iso 17025 we should go for the regular audits and inspection by the outside agencies but while doing that those outside agencies should be also accredited they should uh, have the uh, good uh, experienced staff, technical, uh, technically qualified staff. They should have the proper records maintained there. And uh, the uh, current library of the uh, their testing agency should have the relevant literature also. The two properly conducted tests should result, as I mentioned, in the same result. But if it is not happening, then there is some mismatch in their calibration, in their equipment, in their procedures, in their entire methodology, and we should take care of uh, all those things. Next, please. Uh, this, uh, when we will follow, then only we can think about the quality of the testing, for which we need to go for introspection. We should ask ourselves the different questions. Are we following the norms? Are we following the proper machinery? Are we, are we following the proper methods, equipments? Are our tech, manpower technically qualified? All these things uh, provides us a good scope for the introspection. So if we want to maintain the quality of the testing, the very first thing <coughs> that we should go for introspection. Then we should go for the strict compliance of the specifications and standards to get the meaningful results all of the gimmicks is associated with following the specifications the moment we violate the specifications we are in trouble we will not get the quality and uh, to follow the specifications we need to impart the educations the seminars to educate the contractors the design professionals the testing agency the local professional bodies is must unless otherwise we go for the education through all these different events and we cannot expect the quality of the testing on the field and the education and training should go hand in hand the training is very important uh, when we give the training and education then only our people will follow the specifications there is a uh, great ignorance uh, about the specifications in our uh, country. Uh, if, uh, quality is uh, concerned. We will have to think about the chalpa hai attitude. We will have to say very strictly no, a big no to chalta hai attitude. Then only uh, the quality of the testing will be improved. And we will have to start some new uh, events now pre-construction meets before we initiate the project before we mobilize the project before we start execution of the project we should conduct the meets we should go for seminar and conferences with all the teams with contractor with consultant with designer with all people associated with the construction we need to give them the clear idea of the design assumptions design philosophies adopted we need to give them idea about the specifications the spatial features accountabilities and responsibilities such type of uh, pre construction conference pre construction meet or seminar with all the agencies associated with the project execution is a need of the time uh, if we want to maintain the quality of the 
construction at the end and quality of the testing at the start such meets of all concerns will play a very important role and there should be a literature available with each and every authority that uh, literature should give the idea about the checklist next please the checklist uh, in the form of uh, brochures in the small of uh, in the form of small booklets this should be available it should be made available every technician supervisor lab technician field engineer they should have this sufficient literature with them which will time to time give them the idea of their accountability and their responsibility and very important if we want to maintain the quality of the testing in india we need to start a test first for self assess competency and to improve the proficiency in all developed countries they organize the test fest it is a festival of testing the competitions are organized in this festival the different laboratories they participate the different testing agencies they participate the different evaluating agencies they participate they produce the results of their test and then there will be conference there will be technical expert lectures there will be some question answer sessions and then that festival is a festival of testing this is a very good step we we land up in test fest organization of such kind of festival of testing that i believe will be a good step towards maintaining the quality of the testing one thing is very sure that unless otherwise the quality of testing is enhanced the quality of the construction will not be enhanced and therefore the person the equipment the machine uh, the procedure and the material quality of these four elements is required to be maintained through the quality of the testing to ultimately produce the quality of the work this is the need of the time and the time will not otherwise excuse us if we produce non durable structures so to produce good sustainable structures non durable structures we need to maintain the quality through quality of the testing i am very thankful to the organizers for organizing this e talk a different uh, experiment in the country during covid period uh, i believe that uh, you have enjoyed the session no.